Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to take a look at four examples of the diels alder reaction. And while we're working through these examples, we're going to keep an eye on the stereochemistry. The first diels alder reaction that we're going to look at is between the 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene and maleic anhydride. And this problem is asking us to draw all the products of the following reaction and state the relationship between them. So the way that I would approach this problem is I would take the diene and the dienophile and I would stack them on top of each other in the configuration that would result in the diels alder reaction. There are two ways in which these two reagents could react with each other. In one scenario, the dienophile could react with the diene from the bottom. And in the other scenario, the uh, dienophile would react with the diene from the top. So let's take a look at what results when uh, the dienophile approaches the diene in these two possible configurations. In the first scenario, when the dienophile is on the bottom, and notice that the um, and notice that the configuration here is endo. So in this case, the uh, electrons from the double bond come over here to make a new sigma bond. These electrons come over here to make a new pi bond, and then these sort of come over here to this carbon to make a new sigma bond. And when that happens, you could kind of envision the maleic anhydride sort of turning upward. You can envision that it, the carbonyl groups going upward, right, in order to make um, our six member ring. So let's go ahead and draw the product. We have our six membered ring and the methyl group is still there. The new double bond is formed right here. And now we've got to draw the rest of this maleic anhydride that's now become part of, um, that's now become attached to the six membered ring. So let's go ahead and just draw the five membered ring and then we'll deal with the stereochemistry in a second. All right, so in this scenario, since the maleic anhydride was on the bottom and it sort of flipped upwards, that means that these protons that were in these positions went up as the maleic anhydride was turning over. So that means that in the product structure, these protons are going to be facing upwards. And you kind of think of these... Um, you can think of these bonds as sort of going into the back of the page. Mm -hmm. So that's our first isomer. So now let's go ahead and try the uh, second method of adding these two reagents together. The scenario in which the maleic anhydride comes from the top. It approaches the diene from the top of it. And again, notice that the configuration is endo as well. So in this case, let's go ahead and draw the um, arrows, our electron movement. So th these electrons will come over to this carbon to make a new sigma bond. These electrons will make a new pi bond. And then these will sort of a kind of approach this carbon like this, All right? And now in this scenario, the maleic anhydride turns downward it kind of while the reaction is proceeding. The way that it's drawn right now, you can envision the maleic anhydride going down. So that means that the protons, the, the actually the hydrogens that are here are going to go downward and they're going to point down in the product. So if we draw our product in the plane of the page, you can envision that the protons that were part of this maleic anhydride are going to go to the back of the page. Right? They're going to the back of our page and and now the rest of this five membered ring is sort of pointing upwards and we could draw our carbonyls and don't forget our methyl group and our new double bond that formed and what do you notice about these two um products they're not the same right because they're they have the hydrogens um pointing in different directions So if you take this one and you rotate it 180 degrees, there's that methyl, here's that. And notice that when we flip it over, what happens to the hydrogens? 
the hydrogens used to point downward in this structure. So now when we just turn it 180 degrees, notice that uh, the hydrogens are now going to be pointing it to the front. They're going to be pointing toward you in front of the page. Right? And now take a look at these two structures. Notice that they are exactly mirror images of each other. And if they're mirror images of each other, that means that they are enantiomers. All right, very good. So that is the solution to this problem. Uh, and notice that this reaction produces two different products and they're going to be enantiomers and the um, relative concentrations of these two is going to be one to one. So it's going to be a racemic mixture of the products. All right, now moving on to our next problem. In this problem, we are being asked ab about the products of the following reaction and whether they are going to be chiral, achiral, or a racemic mixture. And again, the, old, the way that I would approach this problem is I would stack the dienophile either on top of the diene or on the bottom of the, the diene and see what comes out in the product. So now let's start by stacking our dienophile on the bottom of the diene. And we're going to draw our electron movement. And these electrons coming to this carbon to make a sigma bond. These coming over here to make a new pi bond and then these pi electrons coming to this carbon to make a new sigma bond. And the product of this reaction is going to be a six membered ring, right? Uh, there's going to be a fluorine on this six membered ring and the fluorine is going to be on this carbon right here. But now let's think about the uh, stereochemistry here. Notice that we approached the dienophile from the bottom. So that means that as the reaction is proceeding, that fluorine is going to be kind of going upwards, right? The, the diene, the, uh, sorry, the dienophile is going to be kind of turning upwards. So that means that these hydrogen atoms that were here are now going to go up. So the hydrogen, so on this carbon, the hydrogen is going to be pointing up and the fluorine is going to be pointing down. And let's not forget our new double bond that we made. All right, so what about the situation where we have the dienophile approaching from the top? In this case, we can draw the same thing in terms of the arrows uh, for the electron movement. So we have these electrons coming over to this carbon, making a new bond right here. Uh, these old pi bonds are making a new pi bond. And then this pi bond is coming over here to the dienophile carbon and making a new sigma bond. And the product is going to be similar, but let's take a look at the stereochemistry again. All right, we got our uh, six member ring. We got a double bond right here. And now again, let's focus on this carbon that is holding the fluorine. In this case, our hydrogen atoms are right here on the dienophile, right? And you can envision them kind of twisting downwards. As the reaction is proceeding, the dienophile is kind of flipping over and the hydrogens are going down and the fluorine starts to stick upwards. So that means that the product of this reaction is going to have the fluorine pointing up and the hydrogen pointing down or away. Fluorine pointing toward you, hydrogen pointing away. And now what do you notice about uh, the products of this reaction? First of all, notice that the product is in fact chiral. There is a stereocenter in the product. So that means that chiral is definitely a yes. But also notice that you're going to form two of the products, right? So you're starting with an achiral uh, mixture and you're ending with chiral products. And because there was no chirality to begin with and there's no chiral catalyst, that means that the chirality of the products is going to be one to one, right? You're going to have one R, one S. Um, eh, forgot the hydrogen right here. Uh, so that means that if it's uh, one to one of R and S isomers, that means that you have a racemic mixture. So 50, 50% 50 in each means that it's a racemic mixture. All right. So now we have a variation on this problem. So just a slight difference in our reaction mixture. We have the same diene, but our dienophile is a little bit different. Notice that in this case, our dienophile has a triple bond. So 
What happens in the Diels Aldo reactions when the dienophile is an alkyne instead of an alkene? And the problem is asking us for the same thing. It's asking us, will the products of this reaction be chiral, achiral, or a racemic mixture, or multiple uh, of the options? So let's take a look. And again, uh, same strategy for this Diels Aldo reaction as with the other ones. Stack your dienophile on top of the diene, react it, and then stack your dienophile on the bottom of the diene and react it, and then compare the products to see what the relative um, stereochemistry relationships are between them. All right, let's start with this first scenario. We have the dienophile on the bottom, and we have the diene on the top. So we're going to draw our uh, electron movements in the same way, where one of these pi bonds, and notice now we have three uh, bonds to work with. Uh, and we have two pi bonds and one sigma bond, so uh, we're only going to use up one of these pi bonds to build our new sigma bond. So we're going to move those electrons over here, and then we're going to use this pi bond to make a new pi bond right here, just as we've done in the past. And then we are going to finally use this um, pi bond from the diene to make a new sigma bond with uh, this carbon on the alkyne. And let's take a look at what the product is going to be. It's going to be a six-membered ring, right? Because that's what deals all the reactions do. They give us six-membered rings. Uh, we're still going to have the double bond in the same place. Uh, we're going to have the fluorine on the carbon at the top here. And what about, what happened to that triple bond? Notice that when we do deals all the reactions and we start from a double bond in our dienophile, when the reaction is done, that double bond has been reduced to a single bond in that region of the molecule. Whereas if we start with a triple bond in our dienophile, then that gets reduced to a double bond. So that means that in our product, in this region of the molecule that came from the dienophile, we are going to have the double bond. So we could do the second scenario of this reaction as well, but what you're already going to notice is that in the product of this reaction, there are no stereocenters. And if there are no stereocenters in the products, that means that the product is achiral. So we already have our answer right here. The product is going to be achiral. So that's option number B. And we can go ahead and do the second scenario as well, just to prove to ourselves that in fact, uh, reacting on the other side of the diene is not going to give us anything different. So let's go ahead and draw our bond. Uh, let's go ahead and draw our uh, electron movements again. So here we go, moving these electrons, uh, pi electrons from the dienophile to our diene onto this carbon. Then we're going to move the pi bonds to make a new pi bond. And then we're going to move these pi electrons over to our dienophile. And what we get is the same thing. We have a six-membered ring with a double bond in this region. And then the fluorine is still on that carbon. And we still have that double bond in the same place. So these are identical. That means that this reaction is going to give us a chiral product. All right, last one. And our last one is going to be kind of like a total synthesis uh, problem. And it is asking us to design the synthesis of the following compound starting from 1,3-butadiene. So 1,3-butadiene has been kind of like the workhorse in all these reactions. So this should be pretty straightforward. The way that I would approach it is I would work backwards. So I'm going to look at the product here. This is our product. And I'm going to start to look for six-membered rings that could have been produced through a diels alder reaction. And notice that I see two of them already. So I'm going to start with just one. I'm going to focus on the right six-membered ring right here. And you can see that there's a double bond in this ring. So what this tells me is that this region right here came from a diene. So let's go ahead and disconnect our molecule right, right along these bonds and then recreate our dienophile. So let's work backwards. When we work backwards, we see that that portion of the molecule came from the diene. Right, the, the, the right ring came from the diene, and it came from the dienophile. So that, let me just go ahead and color the dienophile a different color. So in this first step, or I guess our last step, we had this portion 
arrive to our final product as the diene of file, and then the blue region arrived as the diene. So let's go ahead and draw our diene file that reacted with our diene to form the product that we see there. So we have a six-membered ring, all right? That double bond is still there. This carboxylic acid group is also still there. But then this bond right here used to be a double bond before it became, uh, before it reacted with our diene to become the product. So notice that if we kind of work backwards now, just to kind of confirm that we're doing everything right, we could react this with um, our diene, diene in the same in the same way that we've been doing these reactions, right? And then that gives us this product. Okay, so we're all good here. But notice that we still have a six-membered ring in our diene file here. And this six-membered ring still has a double bond. And if you look closely, you'll recognize that this portion also comes from a diene. And it also comes from 1,3-butadiene. So let's work backwards even further. And now let's uh, write what, uh, which reagents are needed in order to form uh, this red molecule here. So we already said that this portion that's circled in black came from the 1,3-butadiene. So let's go ahead and draw that. And I'm gonna draw the remaining portion probably with purple. So let's go ahead and select purple. So then that means that this purple portion used to be a dienophile. So it came from the dienophile. So in this purple portion that I, that I circled here, notice that it has a double bond after it reacted with uh, butadiene. So that means that prior to the diels alder reaction, there used to be a triple bond, right? Because triple bonds, when they react as dienophiles, they will get reduced to double bonds. So that means that our initial reagent was this compound. All right. So that means that in order for you to make this desired product, you will have to start with two equivalents of 1,3-butadiene, and you're going to use this um, alkyne with a carboxylic acid on it. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and you're starting to get a hang of these deals all the reactions. Let me know if you're still struggling with anything or if anything was unclear, and otherwise, have a good weekend and I'll see you next week.